Here's a quick demonstration of uh, Azure Data Factory extension for Storage Explorer. So as you go, all guys know, uh, the prerequisite for this is that you need to have the Azure Storage Explorer installed. Uh, we support this for all Storage Explorer starting from version 1.16. It's available in the releases. And if you are downloading the latest version of Storage Explorer, you can go ahead, click on download button, download the latest storage explorer and install it. If you already have one, you can get started from there. Once you have installed the storage explorer, or if you already have a storage explorer, you can quickly check out the release notes. And if it's not already open, you can always open it by clicking on help and click on view release notes which will bring you down to this page. You can verify the version of the Storage Explorer that you're running on, uh, should be 1.16 or above to be able to use Azure Data Factory extension on it. And you will find a quick link to download the extension right through this. Click on this button here, and it should start the download of the extension. This is a native extension written on top of Storage Explorer. Just click on it to quickly start it. Click on yes. And it shows installing the extension. And it says you need to restart your Storage Explorer. I'm just gonna click on this button, restart now. And here we go. So we have the Storage Explorer installed with the Azure Data Factory extension. Now, uh, of course, Storage Explorer, uh, if you have to use Azure uh, Data Factory extension, it would also require to use an Azure account because uh, it, it uses Azure Data Factory as a service uh, to move your data. And hence, I'm gonna quickly sign in. So when you're creating, when you're logging in for the first time using the Azure Data Factory extension, it lets you select your Azure account and the subscription, and it gives you an option to either choose an existing data factory in case if you want to power this data movements using that, or you can let it create a new one. Uh, just make sure you have the permissions on the subscription to be able to author to create a uh, Azure Data Factory resource. Uh, if not, uh, then this would fail. And so in that case, we suggest using an existing data factory on which you have contributor rights on. So you can go ahead, use an existing data factory and select from the dropdown from the above subscription. Or if you have the permissions uh, to create a new resource in your subscription, then we would suggest to actually create a new data factory. This ensures that all the new pipelines that would be generated or are generated by this extension would be generated in a newly created data factory. Let's create a new connection. Let's add a new S3 connection. I would just update this. Click on Allow Azure Data Factory Extension to store metadata information. Click on Create button. And it takes a few seconds. Now you can toggle to the storage account that you want to copy this files into. And you have two different ways to copy the files. One is click on this Explorer. You can simply right click copy and click on this surface area in the in the storage account and click on paste button over here so you can simply copy and paste files across and you can see it kicked off the data copy and it's running a pipeline under the hood you can also drag and drop files for example in the surface area and drag and drop works as well so that would also initiate 
the data copy. And you would see that each of these have created uh, pipelines and the benefit here is it is using Azure Data Factory service to power up these data movement jobs. So you can not only move data between Amazon S3 um, to Azure uh, at a great speed and with a great throughput but also within Azure uh, and everything is happening on the cloud service which basically does not depend on the network uh, that you are currently residing with on the storage explorer so it goes through the service so you can imagine really high performance copy um, or data backup that you might want to have over here so you can find more details here you can find additional details how many files we moved you can even click on execution details to find more details about these pipelines and to monitor the, monitor these pipelines as well so click on it it logs in into the data factory where you can find more additional details about the copy job you can even go ahead and edit this pipeline Here's the auto-generated pipeline. So here's what we did. We moved data from Amazon S3 source into an Azure blob storage. And you can do data movement between Azure storages as well. So you can go ahead back to this extension, click on switch connections and create a new connection. You can see you can move data across between Amazon uh, S3, Azure Data Lake Gen 2, and Azure Blob Storage. You can only use Amazon S3 as your source, uh, while you can use Azure Data Lake Gen 2 and Azure Blob Storage as both source and sync. And I can move data between two storage accounts this way. I can drag and drop the whole container. And now it's moving that onto Azure um, inside this S3 backup too. And if your pipeline is taking longer than expected, we do give you a uh, the suggestion is to kind of log in into your data factory to see more uh, more detailed status. Click on this, logs in into the factory, and you can actually do the monitoring right here. You can see you're getting the performance. It gives you an understanding about where your data movement process is at this point in time. The data movement has completed in, and there was like two terabytes of data that has been moved here. Let's get back to the storage explorer now. You can see it takes a few seconds to refresh. And once it refreshes back, click on this button, it'll show that the data movement has succeeded and you can find the folder over here. It's copied, it took some time uh, and you can also find the billing information. Now this is uh, because you're using Azure Data Factory extension to move the data and it uses the cloud service to kind of efficiently and at scale move the data. While it does that, there is certain billing information uh, which, which, which would get billed onto your subscription and to understand what that value comes to this is the DIU hours that you would get billed to so you can go to the Azure data factory pricing page and figure out what this value amounts to in your local currency value prop of this extension that you still are able to get the performance the price perf ratio uh, of data factory with uh, 
ease to use, the same ease to use of uh, Azure Storage Explorer. You can use gestures uh, for drag and drop for moving uh, simple data movement um, that to achieve simple data movement over here. And thank you. And in case if you want to uh, revert back uh, the changes and if you want to move out, you can always click on switch uh, connections and you can go ahead and manage and clean up data factory resources. You can clean up all the data factory resources by navigating to this particular data factory. That is an option as well in case if you would want to delete all the metadata information that contains connections and, and, and so on. Thank you for watching this video and have a nice day. Bye bye.